Personally, I really am not one for the spotlight. Um, I do prefer working behind the scenes. What I love about the museum is it still retains an air of mystery. Even now, after so many years working in the museum, I can walk around, peer into a case, and suddenly think, that's new. And that's because the cases are so densely packed that you often find artifacts hidden behind each other. And so you're still discovering new things about the museum all the time. Now, normally, during this time of the day, the museum would be crowded. But at the moment, there is no one in the building bar me. Hello, my name is John Simmons. I always enjoyed visiting museums. I've grown up in Oxford, and the only time I visited the Pitt Rivers was with a school party, a school group. And my memories of that one visit were stepping into a, what was a very dark space. And the lighting, well, to be fair, was not very good at the time. So it was a very creepy and very spooky place to be. And if I'm honest, I didn't really enjoy it very much. I've now been working for the Pitt Rivers Museum for 36 years plus. Um, I'm basically the facilities manager for the museum. I'm looking through a glass door and there are displays of spears, of clubs, displays demonstrating the variety of body arts and body adornments. There are paddles suspended above your head. There are magic and charm cases, including one with a witch in a bottle. Boomerangs, throwing knives, textiles and baskets from all over the world. And of course, the claw, tucked away in a case in the court. It does seem to me as though the, the whole collection is just waiting for reanimation and just waiting for the public to come back in. Whilst we're closed down to the public, um, we obviously have to keep an eye on the, the place. You know, just making sure that everything is as it should be. I didn't choose the museum as a career path. I fell into the job by complete accident. I was unemployed at the time and they were looking for someone part-time just to fill in um, while somebody was off sick. So that's my history um, and I've been with the museum ever since. Which means that I'm the longest serving member of staff at the museum. So I'm just about to make my way up. I'm going to use the museum lift because uh, I'm getting a bit older now. Going up. Doors. When I joined the museum, there was no database as such, no real location kind of index. Um, you often had to go to staff members who had been here for a long period of time themselves. Okay. It was all in their heads. I'm still in the top gallery of the museum because it kind of has fond memories for me from the 19, early 1990s. Um, partly because I helped install it the cases go up about 20 foot. 
and in these cases I had to look at the key to remind myself there are 139 shields and we affectionately call it the shield wall display because the shields all overlap each other we were looking to squeeze in as many kind of objects on display as possible it is a very very eye-catching display but the one that always kind of draws me to it is actually a shield that comes from Ethiopia and it's not necessarily the most beautiful shield to look at it's not necessarily the most important shield to look at it's really because it's the donor Wilfred Thessinger he was probably one of the last great explorers of the 20th century um, the reason I'm drawn to it is I actually met him here at the museum um, he was very tall um, we had a very tall director at the time and I think he dwarfed our director it's circular in shape it's conical it's kind of got um, red velvet on the inside I wouldn't say it's the most prettiest shield in the world but it rings a bell with me I was very surprised when the director expressed admiration for this display and so I am very happy that uh, people still like the actual display itself um, anyway I've probably got another two three years left before I retire and since the museum was founded in 1884 there have only been five head technicians. Um, so I'm part of a pretty exclusive club, I think.